and I uh, share the, the honor of being co-chair with Mr. Allen of the Squad 7 Citizens Committee. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge a couple of, uh, of our local uh, political and governmental people. Mr. Uh, excuse me, Mayor John Gale, thank you very much, sir, for coming. Commissioner Joyce Evans, thank you as well. And District 5 Councilman, Mr. Timothy Carroll. We appreciate all of you being here. Thank you, sir. And if you'll give me just a second, we have a number of individuals who are on this committee, all of whom are pretty well known, and all who feel very, very strongly about this project. And I just want to let you know who else is uh, working with us on the Citizens Committee. And that would be in alphabetical order. Kevin Conrad, Laura Love with South Georgia Medical Center, James McGahey, Suzanne Prince, of course, is with us up here this morning, uh, Willie Rayford, and, of course, Jerome Tucker. So we're very proud to have all of them working with us. I have just a couple of things to say, and um, I've been here long enough now, 16 years, maybe I don't sound it, but I have, to be able to observe the, the, the efforts of Blossoms, not a tax that I have ever seen anywhere I have lived, but it's the most amazing um, thing that I have ever seen, and I, I wish it could be adopted in, in cities everywhere. It isn't any secret that over the past several years, many governments in Georgia have fallen victim to economic downturn, and that's affected all of us. As I've become more and more aware of issues facing other communities, I realize that while we certainly feel the pinch and have felt the pinch in the last couple of years, um, in Valdosta, and of course the county as well, we do continue to fare better than most. Why is that? I'd say take another look at the amenities our community is able to offer because of our SPLAS commitment. Projects related to infrastructure, economic development, parks and recreation, just to name a few, continue to attract events. They continue to bring large numbers of people here. And those large numbers of people that travel to our area to see and participate in some of these other uh, projects and events are bringing lots of people with them. And they're spending lots of money. We've taken those pennies with, uh, from them for each dollar they spend. And I'll take all of them. But it is these attractions and those non-residents that continue to provide um, our opportunities to continue to do well here in, in, in our local economy. Squashed, made the amenities possible. Squashed sets us apart from so many other communities. And it is Squashed that will continue to make the difference. One thing. Let's not forget that SPLOS 7 is not a new tax, but the continuation of an existing tax. SPLOS 7 will not begin until January 2014. It is expected to generate $150 million over a six-year period, money that we desperately need for many, many things. It is a fact that SPLOS significantly helps in keeping our property taxes low. And ladies and gentlemen, my personal favorite, more than 50% of the SPLOS taxes are collected from non-residents. I think that's an extremely important point. I too follow Mr. Allen and ask you to give serious consideration to voting for the renewal of SPLOST 7. Thank you very much.